And just show on the road again. My name is April Thompson. I'm director of marketing and sales for Bloom. And uh, our presentation today um, will probably run um, about 45 minutes. We'll have time for, for Q&A at the end. So please do use the chat box for any questions or comments. This is part of a series that we've been doing here um, during our uh, COVID quarantine times. Um, and um, you can find all the recordings um, under the video page on the Bloom website. So feel free to check out some of our past webinars. Um, today's webinar is on benefits and applications of Bloom for turf grass. We'll have three speakers today. Um, we will first hear from James Fatohi from DC Water, who is a wastewater engineer um, managing Bloom operations at Blue Plains. As program manager for biosolids operations, he ensures that all DC water and contractual biosolids operations and services at Blue Plains wastewater treatment plant follow the internal bi biosolids management plan and system and all federal, state, local regulatory permits and requirements. He holds a bachelor's degree in civil engineering from the University of British Columbia and worked for Blue Tech Research and Engineers Without Borders before joining DC Water. We're then going to hear from Jeff Michael, who is the Vice President of m and Consulting based in Warrington, Virginia. Jeff received his BS in agronomy from Penn State University and worked for the golf course industry for 20 years, primarily in a superintendent capacity before joining m and in 2004. M&M Consulting provides agronomic and environmental services to the golf, equine, agricultural, and horticultural industries throughout the Mid-Atlantic and Carolinas region. They also serve over 120 golf courses nationwide, including four streams, which uh, is our third presenter. Alan Turner is the golf course superintendent of four streams, um, coming here from North Carolina and had pursued his passion in golf course maintenance, working for the public and private ranks of the Mid-Atlantic region. He's a graduate from the University of Maryland at College Park in golf course management. So welcome to all of our speakers and welcome to all of our attendees. With that, I'm going to turn it over to you, James. All right, uh, thanks April. All right, just one second to load this up here. All right, so um, thanks everybody for joining. Uh, as April mentioned, I'm the uh, program manager here at DC Water in our Department of Resource Recovery. Um, so in addition to looking after the biosolids program, I'm also involved in some of the technical aspects of the, uh, the material, making new blends. Um, and so we've had a lot of experience uh, with customers using this on turf grass. Um, internally in DC Water, but also all across uh, all across Maryland. Um, so I was hoping to share with, with that uh, some of that uh, with you today. Um, just a little bit of background. So again, all this material, this bloom comes from Blue Plains, which is our wastewater facility uh, just the south of, of DC. Um, so we get uh, wastewater from uh, DC, parts of Montgomery, PG County, as where as as well as Arlington, and, and a little bit. Loudon. So we have quite a large service area. Uh, one nice thing is that's mostly residential, so, so we don't have to worry about industrial contaminants, which kind of informs what we can reuse with the, uh, our material as. So as part of the wastewater process, we get a solid material. Um, and this material, it's organic, it has lots of nutrients, um, but if you don't treat it correctly, it can have some, some pathogens and things that you don't want in, in, in a product. So uh, in 2014, we, we had the privilege to complete a, a really nice upgraded facility that um, treats that solid material. Uh, basically, it's a pasteurizing step followed by digestion, so stabilization of the some of that unstable carbon. What that means is that our material is pathogen-free and also relatively stable. Um, and one of the big things is uh, a lot of the odors that one would associate with sewage is, are eliminated. Um, so there's a bit of an ammonia smell, but much less offensive than a, than a typical biosolid. Um, and that's what's allowed us to uh, market this material um, to a lot of different sectors. And this is what enables us under the EPA 503 regulations 
to market this as a class A biosolid um, for safe for use in um, any application. Um, so one of the nice parts of this project, in addition to making that blue material, is we generate green power uh, at the combined heat and power plant, which cuts greenhouse gas emissions. A lot of our uh, transport is much closer. Instead of going all the way, you know, to the southern parts of Virginia, we're, we're taking a lot of our material around uh, southern Maryland, PG Montgomery County, Howard, um, which is a much shorter trip. It's quite a nice project. Um, so what is in this material and why would you be interested in using it? So uh, as I mentioned, it's a source of organic matter and also organic nutrients. Uh, it's a kind of a direction that, that uh, nutrient applicators are moving in away from the quickly mineralizable you know, ammonium uh, nitrates um, towards more slow release organic, organic nutrients that doesn't you know, create as much pollution and also lets the plants kind of absorb them over a longer period of time, which is more reflective of, of some of those natural systems. Um, the benefit of organic matter, um, I'm sure many of you are aware of, uh, you know, you see dr increased drought resistance, uh, better cation exchange capacity. Um, our material has a really nice cation exchange capacity between 10 and 15, so a bit more nutrient dense than um, uh, the, a bit better C C to N ratio than you would expect from a other other types of composts, um, and yeah, we, we we've seen that we've seen that drought resistance last year. If, if uh, any of you are farmers or, or, or around Southern Maryland, you know we had a couple of months there it was very dry. We had folks who were using on their uh, soybeans and saw some really nice results. So that drought resistance really is a thing. That's something you're looking for for your, as part of your turf. Um, we also have a lot of mi micronutrients that uh, that are helpful for plant growth. So copper, molybdenum. A little bit of boron, not in high quality quantities, but in quantities that you would um, uh, that you would <clears throat> uh, want your plants to um, to have. Um, so, so there's a lot of benefits to this material. Um, and now, when it comes to uh, so, there's a couple of products that we have. Um, so we have our base material, which is mostly what we sell, and we have some bag material as well, which is just that material but dried. So it's a little bit easier to apply. The base material is a, a bit sticky. It has that ammonia smell in some applications. It's not um, not what we're looking for, especially like if you're trying to push it through a hand-drawn compost spreader, uh, the cake material won't work, but some of our blends are, are great for that. So we've got two different blended products, one combined with mulch vines, another one combined with sawdust and sand. Uh, the sawdust and sand one, we've seen very good results with top dressing turf, which I'm gonna get into in, in just a moment. Um, so yeah, these are some of the different materials that we use. Uh, so, you know, like I mentioned, like why are some of the reasons we would want to use um, use this on turf? Uh, so there's the slow release nitrogen, right? Um, that's going to reduce how much starter you're going to need to use, and uh, over the over you know that first year, how much you're going to need to apply in terms of you know, fertilizer maintenance. Um, we've noticed really nice benefits to hydraulic conductivity. Um, you know, if you're familiar with the region, we're often dealing with heavy clays out here. Um, and so compaction and, 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 and the ability of water to throw through, flow through the soil profile is, uh, is often an issue. Um, in some of the studies we've done, we see really good biomass growth. In fact, one of the most uh, common complaints we get is that their grass is growing too fast and you have to keep mowing every week after you first apply it. So you definitely get a lot of nice growth. Um, and as well, you get, you get better root growth, which ultimately is going to improve that sort of uh, carbon building cycle. Um, so a few years back, we, we took part in a joint study with uh, University of Maryland and State Highway Authority to look at, you know, what's the effect of this material on some marginal land. Um, so this is at the SHA headquarters um, up in Howard County, I believe. And so we set up a few different plots to test our material versus conventional fertilizer and a few other composts. Um, just to see like what, what are the benefits um, relative to those other options that you might use when you're uh, taking care of turf grass. Um, so this is kind of the study design. So like I said, we used our blue material, a few different uh, blends, as well as the uh, uh, deer compost that um, SHA makes and um, conventional fertilizer. And we, we did a, um, some of the plots were tilled, some of them were um, uh, just surface top dressed. Uh, so here's that site again, very, uh, <laughs> not the best looking soil as you, as you can tell, it's definitely got some, uh, had, had equipment sitting there for a while. So, you know, you're gonna have some maybe legacy contamination issues. 
Um, but yeah, very, very limited organic matter, very nutrient poor. Um, so uh, a, a good, a good test to see how we're going to do to improve that soil. Here's that first kind of growing season. Um, so we definitely got a lot, a lot of good results in that uh, after the initial application and clearing of the land. Um, and so here are some of those results. I was kind of mentioning this. We, we measured above ground biomass, you know, in the first growing season and the next growing season, um, you know, as an indicator, you know, is, is there any residual nitrogen or residual impact from, uh, from the material? And we, we definitely saw that uh, a, a lot of great benefits. Like I mentioned, the, the sawdust sand had a, had a really nice biomass growth, um, but, but, but a bit less residual, which makes sense because the bloom base material is going to have a bit more nutrients there. Um, really good results from the deer compost. Um, so that, that's, that's quite a nice material they make there, um, despite its origin. Um, but yeah, definitely better than conventional fertilizer. And that's going to be from some of those other other uh, things that we're going to have in there, like the organic matter and the, and the drought resistance. So um, we saw a lot of good results there. Um, a lot of nice results with uh, uh, hydraulic conductivity. Again, like I mentioned, really, <laughs> that deer compost looks pretty good too. Um, but but our sawdust sand mixture definitely had, had some really good improvements to um, the, the soil profile. So this so after this study, you know, it's, it's probably a year, two or three at this point. Um, you know, we're, we're confident that we're going to we're going to bring some benefit to you as um, folks who need to maintain or establish turf grass. Um, uh, so this is a um, uh, so, yeah, I wanted to just talk about a little bit about, you know, what are we going to do in terms of application? Um, you know, what are we talking about when we're adding it? Uh, so, you know, as as the material. Our, our blends are registered um, soil amendments. Our base materials are registered fertilizer. So as, as with a fertilizer, you're going to have to pay attention to how much you're adding, especially if you're top dressing turf. I'm sure you're all aware of that. Um, so some of the some of the success that we've had, and this is a field um, in DC, a ball field. Uh, you know, we were spreading just surface applying uh, the, the sawdust sand blend um, after aerating and seeding. Um, so again, we were we were adding about a quarter inch, which is you know, uh, you know, four to five pounds of organic nitrogen um, per thousand square feet, uh, and again, the mineralization rate on our on our nitrogen is, is about twenty percent. Um, so that's that's you know kind of in line with with the amount of N that you want to add. You can add more if you want to incorporate, because again, you've got the organic matter there, which can be sometimes um, a lot more beneficial. Maybe that's what you're looking for in terms of improving the soil. Uh, but just for the the nitrogen application as a top dress, that's kind of what we've seen success at. Like I said, we've definitely had customers add a bit more uh, if they're incorporating it in the soil profile. Um, I do try to tell customers if you're going to surface apply, really don't want to add too much because you're going to over nutrify the soil. Um, uh, now I have had customers do it and succeed, but uh, again, that's not, not not the best uh, not the best um, uh, process there. Uh, so uh, another project that we've seen a lot of great results from, uh, this was talked about in our last webinar is, is Urban Zinc. They actually came on and gave a real nice presentation. So this is, they are, uh, you know, site work um, contractors. So they, you know, after you finish completing a building, they'll do the, 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 the fields and the, and, the, and the turf grass. So this, this site is Crofton High School um, in Anne Arundel County. Uh, so they were, they were uh, tasked with, you know, building a, a bunch of fields as well as, as a large football field. Um, and so what they did is they took cake material and incorporated it into it because uh, they had to add um, organic matter and they saw a lot of great results. You know, they saw definitely reduced need for fertilizer after um, in that first year because of the residual nitrogen. Um, and so, you know, you can see here just them applying it on that top photo and then below is, is, is the results. Um, I believe this photo from last year, uh, but it looks really great and they're, they're quite happy with it. They've got six, Six or seven other schools that they're they're using this material on, so they're definitely seeing a lot of great results um, in terms of its improvement of turf and, and soil. Um, this was that field that I was showing you earlier. So uh, you know they came to us, uh, a colleague of ours actually um, from the American Bio Biogas Council. Um, you know I was having a lot of issues with with the ball field. Um, I guess in D.C. there's not a lot of turf maintenance done for um, ball fields. And so they had a bunch of large patches that were just bare, you know, that have been run down over the years. So uh, we came out with them and, and brought a few trucks of that uh, sawdust sand mixture. We just spread it out. Uh, it was quite nice. We had, you know, 30 or 40 people come out, um, spreading it out. Uh, and uh, yeah, the results are look really good. So you're seeing here in that, in this larger photo, 
you know, there used to be a big just just gap here where there was just nothing. Um, so we're really, really impressed with the results. And again, they didn't till it in. It was just uh, aeration and seeding and then um, surface application. So that, that was a real nice, uh, real nice project. Um, this is one of our bigger projects. This is land construction on Route 5. Uh, they've been working on this for, for quite a while, and they used our material as part of an SHA blend that they needed to make uh, for the topsoil. And um, they saw great results. So this is a photo from, from 2018. Um, so they mixed it with sand and the in-situ soil, the salvage, and were able to make a, just an awesome topsoil mix, um, <clears throat> which, which grew some really nice uh, turf. Uh, you know, here's some other... Uh, some other um, some other users, this is Navy Federal Credit Union. They're spreading, I believe, that mulch mixture uh, on, on their turf, and they've been really happy with it. We've been working with them for over a year. This picture on the right is just a homeowner. You know, he was, uh, you know, redoing his lawn. Uh, I, I think uh, he'd had a contractor in, and, and they somewhat compacted the soil. So as you can see, it's not doing the best, um, but he took some of our material and applied it and uh, was real happy with it. So he sent us a after photo, and. Uh, uh, really, really impressed with the results. So, um, so yeah, we've, like I mentioned, we've used this extensively with turf projects um, and, and some of the other speakers are gonna talk to some of the golf applications, but uh, it's, it's definitely had some great results and, um, you know, uh, we're happy, happy to be working and helping out folks um, looking to improve their turf. Uh, well, thank you. That's the end of my presentation. Thanks, James. That was great. Uh, ready to go, Jay, uh, Jeff? Yes, indeedy. All right. Let's fire this thing up. All right. So uh, I, I can confer a lot with what James has said. I've worked with Urban Zinc for a long time, developing that one in four soil blend on those high schools. And uh, it really has exceeded our expectations. So it's absolutely a great use for the product, uh, as is uh, the ball fields with the top dressing and homeowners. Uh, really excellent product. So as I like to say, our golf turf is blooming. We're trying to um, get in and experiment with hey, some- Hey, Jeff, sorry to interrupt you for a sec. Could you just make your- um... Go to slideshow and make this full screen so so we can see that a little better. Better. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So um, what we're doing in this mid Atlantic region, as James mentioned, we have been lacking a high quality, consistent organic matter for turf grass, pretty much my entire life. Um, when I was little, my business partner and I it really affected us. We took to the bottle a little bit. We couldn't find good organic to use in the golf course industry. So Bloom came along. We met with James, who, you know, three or four years ago and, and looked at the cake product back then and tried to determine how we could utilize that product to help us meet this shortfall of organic matter. Um, in golf, we use a lot of high sand content medias for putting greens and tees, and we need an organic source for that to help modify its moisture and nutrient principles. It drains well, but it drains well. Um, so another opportunity when we get into construction, we needed a good amendment to put in. As James mentioned, a lot of clays in the soil around here kind of lacking in good soil structure in a lot of places. And especially when you run a bulldozer over things, uh, you can destroy what kind of soil structure you had. So organics are part of the saving principles for soil structure in that aspect. And then again, controlled release fertilization for existing turf. You know, putting products on that kind of mimic the natural environment. As it gets warmer, these products release feeding the turf grass slow and steady as opposed to quick and furious. So we're trying to get a nice, even, controlled feed. So that were, that were the opportunities that we were looking at. Um, when I go to a golf course that's going to do a construction project, 
most of the construction now blends peat moss with the sand to modify these water holding pro uh, properties and increase the nutrient retention in the material. Most peat moss comes from Canada. It's expensive. It has had some supply disruptions. And again, if you're talking a carbon footprint, you know, it's a long way to drive puff from Canada to do what you want to do. So when we blend media for a golf course, we can blend a project could be 10,000 cubic yards. So we're talking about a lot of material, a lot of need for organic matter. And what we've done is we're looking at this bloom and blending that material 3% by volume. And what we found is if we blend in approximately that percentage, we get very similar properties as compared to a sand peat blend, but we get more nutrition. Peat moss, while it's a carbon source and it's like a sponge, it doesn't really bring anything to the table. James mentioned we got some phosphorus, some nitrogen. We got a lot of miners in the uh, product, the bloom product. Those materials really can jumpstart our new growing seedlings on golf course greens and tees. So this green here was put in. It was put in with another uh, bio organic source. But after 60 days, you can see it's got some pretty good coverage. It looks pretty sweet and uh, excellent root development, good nutrient. Didn't take a lot of fertility to actually get it grown in. That's the kind of root structure that we're looking at when you use these materials completely blended in a sand. Normally on a on a putting green, Alan will uh, talk to us a little bit later. You know, you get two, three, four inch roots. You're feeling pretty smug. That root mass right there is about 10 inches and it would have been longer except my profiler didn't go deeper. Um, that's what happens when you use products like Bloom in your media construction. Um, Back to the construction areas. Um, typically, when uh, construction activity starts, like those schools you saw with Urban Zinc or a golf course, a lot of the topsoil stripped. It's moved, but it's amazing how it gets lost. Um, we put the, the contours back in shape, and we can use the Bloom product to restore and help improve the topsoil before planting. And trust me on this, a, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound, it's worth three pounds of cure. Once that grass is on top of there, it is far more challenging to improve the soil structure and fertility than it is beforehand. So I encourage all my clients, my sod guys, hey, put it on, incorporate it in, plant your grass, it's going to be much more effective, less expensive in the long run than trying to fix things over the top. Now you get a site like this where they kind of build a pond and you can just incorporate some of that bloom and get the grass growing around these edges and improve water quality much quicker than you can by using either synthetic fertilizer or doing nothing at all. Um, bloom, controlled release, that's slow and steady wins the race, you know, especially in a homeowner scenario. One thing that I found is most homeowners like to use the bag and whether they get the square footage correct or not is sometimes subject to discussion. However, if we use a product like Bloom where we have a larger margin of error, we can put it out there, slowly feed the turf, not burn the turf, not create a leaching potential, and not stink out the neighborhood. So it's a great fit for home use 
because for lack of better term, it's pretty, it's not complex. Go out there, put it on, everything's good. And, you know, James talked about the nitrogen load in the material being relatively low. And what I'll tell you from our mid-Atlantic region, if you want to develop healthy root systems, it's critical that you don't over nitrify your turf grass profile. The lower nitrogen rates, just enough to color it up, just enough to create some plant health and viability, develop better root systems than plants that are force fed a bunch of nitrogen. Just imagine taking your four year old to the county fair and giving them cotton candy all day. That's what happens if we overstimulate grass with nitrogen in a commercial form. If we use these bloom biosolid type products, slow and steady, nice color, nice growth, ease of management, healthier plants. So that's something to consider as a, as a wonderful opportunity for using these products. Uh, whoops. Oh, there's a slide missing. I was going to show you a home lawn, but if anybody has any questions, feel free to type them in. I will answer them in any way I can. And uh, thanks for having me and thanks for listening. Thanks so oh, much, Jeff. Yeah, uh, and um, please do, um, if you've got any comments or questions, um, start typing them in and, and uh, we'll hold them for the end here. Alan? Are you set to go? Yeah, I'm just trying to get it uh, loaded up here. Hold on. Great. We, we do see your screen. If you can just go to slideshow and make that full full screen, we should be good to go. Trying to relax. Let's see here. Uh, Right there in the middle, of, between between animations and review, there's slideshow. If you just click there, which one? On on the um on the toolbar in between animations and review, there's slideshow. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Then, great. Oh, you can see. Okay, you can see it. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, can you see? Me now? Yep. All good. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, so let me um try to expound off of what James and, and Jeff were talking about from, from my example, um, being a golf course superintendent and how I've incorporated um, the benefits of using Bloom. Um, a little bit of a background about four streams. Um, <clears throat> we are uh, out in the upper northwest part of Montgomery County. Uh, we're actually were built um, in 1997 and opened in 98. Um, and it was a member's course um then um but now we're under a single ownership and the unique thing about four streams is that we were built on the ag reserve uh here in montgomery county um so a little bit of a background of when i took over i took over last year uh in september of 2019 and the management style before um i took over was a little bit um on what i should say kind of the lush side uh higher heights of cut um a lot of water being thrown um typically that's not something um, that you want on a golf course uh when you want firm fast conditions for members that um you know are looking for green speeds of 11 12s things like that and so with a lot of water um and also not understanding what you want to get from you know your fertilization program um you can get into a lot of problems so when i took over we incurred a lot of uh of damage uh pythium and uh takeoff patch diseases um and especially like right now when you get into the summer months um when you have heavy rains um then you have high humidity nights, 70 degrees at night, 90 degree days uh, with relative humidities and, you know, close to 80. Uh, a lot of times the plant doesn't have um, the capability of drying itself out. So you run into problems like that. So when I took over, 
like I said, we had a, a lot of damage out here. And so we were looking to get into recovery mode. So what I did was I reached out to Jeff Michael. Um, he is one of the gurus in the industry. Um, he and I met years ago when I first got into the, um, to the golf business in this area on the public side. And, um, you know, he was just one of those guys that, you know, he could really get down on the level of, you know, taking the science uh, trans and translating it to layman's terms where I could understand it. And so when I took over, he was one of the first gentlemen that I called and I said, hey, I need you on my team. And he said, hey, I'll, I'll be out there. So, uh, you know, he spent the day when we rode the property and everything like that. And, and he and I talk, um, you know, when, you know, it, it, as much as we can um, through email, through text, through everything. I mean, he, I have him on speed dial. And so he introduced me to Bloom and he's like, you know, here's the contact, you know, get them out there and, and see what you think. So um, I decided uh, between the three um, different products, the fresh, the woody blend and the, the sawdust, I decided to go with the woody blend because I was looking for a compost comparable to the compost that I was getting um, through another vendor out of uh, Virginia. Um, and what I found was that, that it was more cost effective with Bloom. Uh, for example, um, Jeff touched on the, uh, the peat moss and, and construction that's used for uh, moisture retention and greens mix. Uh, for example, um, last year I spent um, quite a bit of money on getting a greens divot mix in here for our practice area with peat moss. Well, basically, um, Bloom has shown me that it's more cost effective because for the price that I paid for that 23 tons of uh, greens divot mix with, with peat moss, I can very well do the same thing. So this slide here shows you my staging area. Um, this is actually my second uh, low uh, this year of the woody uh, compost mix. Um, and so I have a fairway top dressing um, that I use out of Southern Maryland. And I actually, for every um, ton I use, I mix the, the, the woody blend to a quarter a ton. So for every, every ton, you know, I mix it up and I make a blend that way. Um, so I use it two different ways. I use it by itself and I also use it for a fairway mix. And you'll see that in one of the other slides. So this is my staging area. Um, and like I said, it's just, it's been more cost effective for me because it actually compared to, like I said, with the peat moss, I can actually blend my own material. And, you know, I do have a construction project out here that I want to try to do. So I'm going to try to incorporate the other two products, but I'm just not sure uh, exactly with the sawdust where I'm going to incorporate that. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to the future and, and seeing what we can do. So, for example, um, I have a sod farm. I have a, a, a acre nursery um, on property. Um, and so these are the gentlemen here that helped me um, keep this place in shape. Uh, and this is one of our projects. It's 2,500 uh, square feet on the back of a, uh, a T, which is on a hillside. And that was all covered with thistle, clover, sedges, everything like that. It was just gnarly, nasty looking. So, you know, I pulled my assistant over there and some guys and I said, Let, you know, hey, let's strip this. And you can see that basically uh, we put down a thin layer um, for that slow nitrogen release with the woody blend um, on, you know, and then place the sod on top of that. And it gives it a nice slow feed um for the root system because you know look with anything with anything like turf and and trees you know they have to have a good anchorage system if you don't have a good anchorage system um you know you're not going to do well up top and so every side project that i do out here this is just an example of one of them uh, we use this woody blend and put it down as a, on a thin layer um for that slow feeding um, and this is the end result this is uh two weeks after uh, we sodded that area. So seen a lot of good benefits from it. It gives great color and everything like that. And I mean, you can, you know, you go back and you look at that and you kind of see after we cut it, how yellow kind of discolored the sod looks. But then, like I said, once it anchors down in there and it's getting that slow feed from the, the compost mix, I mean, you get a great color out of it. And that's what you want. I mean, in my business, green is king. You know, we're, we're not like the other side of the pond of the Atlantic, you know, where 
our British cousins, you know, kind of like brown and everything like that. And there's a reason for that. But over here, I mean, you know, there's just, you know, kind of like the Augusta National look, you know, green is king here. Um, so I even use it around greenside areas. Um, this collar uh, was one of the collars around. This is number 16 green on the back side. I mean, you can see um, it's a different side of the golf course where there's a lot of trees and a lot of shade. Uh, a lot of overwatering that had happened um, down here uh, around the rough area is kind of thin. You see that. Uh, so we stripped all this out. And even though this is um, this collar is a part of the greens mix, so it's all sand based because I have California style greens. Um, I even put down a thin layer of that just for moisture retention. And um, so the, the slide to the right, you'll see that, that that's great, uh, good color and, and really uh, rooted down really quick. Um, I've noticed that when I do that, that after I saw it immediately a week after, as long as I keep it hydrated, you know, because you, you got to stay on top of sod. You can't just, you know, let it just go. You got to, you know, keep moisture to it. I found that within a week, I'm already getting good, good roots, um, you know, trying to dig down and, and create a good anchorage. Um, other areas that I use it on um, is shaded areas. Uh, so this is number 13. So this is back in early March. Um, this damage that you see to the left, that is from our big heavy rotary mowers, uh, you know, making circles around the trees, uh, plus the shade. Um, doesn't take a lot, doesn't get a lot of, doesn't get a lot of sunlight. So we came in there with a core air fryer um, and we air fried it, uh, pulled the cores, cleaned the cores up. Um, and then we came in and hand seeded with a push rotary spreader and uh, we've seen good results. I mean, you can see all of that through there other than this little thin area, and that's just from our bigger mower uh, going over that a, a couple times. And so actually this area, uh, two weeks ago, we redid that. Um, so you can see the difference. Uh, it's actually, like I said, just, just good, great color. And it just a, it's a, such a slow feed for the, for the, uh, the seedlings once they pop. Um, Here's another great example. This is on the same side of the golf course on the back side. Um, these are shaded areas. Um, this is number 14. Um, so you can see I kind of have the, the slides reversed and I apologize for that. But the one on the right, you can see this is where we uh, kind of pull the, the cores. You can kind of see in there seedlings coming up. Um, and then this is again. Uh, I have a couple different options. I have guys that will go out with um, pitchforks and shovels and hand toss the woody blend. And I do have a heavy duty uh, utility cart with a top dresser on it that I can go out in bigger areas like this and do that. And so I, that's what I chose to do is I use that heavy duty uh, utility cart with the top dresser on top. And, um, and then any little thin areas that I didn't really get, then we came back in and we hand uh, tossed it out with uh, pitchforks and and, um, and shovels um, and so then this is what it looks like this is actually a week ago after we just mowed it um, so I've seen good results um, and this area I, I really take pride in because um, it just shows the the necessity for you know having a good product um, with a slow release nitrogen in it because when you get into fertilizers with golf courses, um, a bag of fertilizer, you can get anywhere from upwards of $25 to $35 a bag, even $40 a bag, depending on the blend and everything. So it gets very ex expensive. So, so Bloom is, is, is showing me that we can do things and be more cost effective. Um, instead of me going out and buying, you know, 200 bags of a $30 fertilizer, um, you know, this is actually something that I want to incorporate in our rough. And so Jeff and I, when he comes out and meets with me again this year, and we start kicking the tires again um, and start looking around and poking around, we're going to talk about the, these different products uh, with the sawdust and the bloom and what place that they're going to have at Force Change. But right now, the Woody blend is, has really given me what I've been looking for, um, especially um, trying to have good recovery. Um, and again, just to repeat, um, this is the staging area. So the, here with where the arrow is, that is a, a fairway, fairway compost um, seed mix. Um, so basically we mix it up with the fairway top dress, the woody blend, um, and then we go out in areas like this to the right on that slide. Um, we actually go out and we hand 
toss that out and then we level it out with a level on um and those the kind of the darker brown areas that's kind of where kind of some of the bloom um the woody blend it, it kind of cakes up a little bit so basically i just ask the guys to just take those and just kind of you know bust them up with their hands as best they can um and what i found too is that you know this 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 woody blend it comes in and it has just a little bit of a stench to it but it's nothing that's not not bearable um i've used chicken litter um being from the carolinas you know uh swine i've used that kind of litter as well and yeah that's it gives off a, a good ammonium um very ripe smell but uh once once you get it delivered you'll have a little bit of a vague stench to it but eventually it airs out enough that it's bearable and so that i use it because you know like i said i'm looking for recovery and this next slide will kind of show that recovery so this is uh, an example of the the damage on a fairway uh which is number two um, that I incurred. Um, and this is actually after a quarter of an inch of rain. So I have some drainage issues, things like that. But, uh, you know, the slide to the right, just, you know, a, a picture's worth a thousand words. I mean, I couldn't ask for a better product that has given me recovery. Um, and, you know, I look forward to trying to incorporate more of it out here because I have construction projects and, and things like that that I want to do out here. So um, it's cost effective. Uh, it gives me the moisture retention that I'm look, looking for. It gives me the slow feed that I'm looking for. And so the, I don't, I haven't come across a better product than, than, um, than what I'm, I'm getting from uh, Bloom. And, and I really appreciate it. And um, I can't thank uh, Jeff enough for, for what he's done for me um, because I lean on him um, really hard because, I mean, he's been doing this for a long time. And I've learned that, uh, you know, you have to reach out to people that, you know, there's always an expert out there. There's always someone that knows a little bit more than you. And I'm always like a sponge. I, I, I want that information and I, I want good products. And, you know, our our theme here uh, with my ownership is, is that we want to leave four streams in a better position than when I took over. And so we're going to complete that vision and, and we're going to make sure that we continue to incorporate Bloom into what it is that we're trying to do here. So any questions, please feel free to ask, and um, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alan. That uh, was fantastic, and we're so excited that um, you're excited about Bloom and working with us. Um, we haven't, I don't think we've had any questions. Oh, here we go. Um, I am totally wrong. Let's see, we've got um, Lisa, um, who had asked what spreading equipment can be used to top dress uh, grass with bloom for grass establishment. Um, I know, Jeff, you had responded um, in the comments, but maybe you want to go ahead and respond to that so everyone can hear your answer there if they didn't, if they didn't see that. Okay. Um, what I, I responded to Lisa in the comments section, the dry product uh, can go out with a rotary spreader, you know, in, in small areas like home lawns guy like Alan can use larger equipment that is on the golf course. Uh, they have top dressers, turf go top dressers, et cetera, that can be used to spread some of the, the dry product. Now the cake, the cake is something that is more of a, a construction kind of opportunity to me because as Alan will mention, it'll, it'll get chunky. So, you know, you can spread it out like Urban Zinc did, and they had that, uh, you know, bobcat with a soil pulverizer on the front. So they were integrating uh, an inch of the Bloom cake product into the top four inches of soil to create a, a kind of a on-site custom blend. So again, it all depends on scale. Dry and blended with uh, sand and sawdust, a little bit easier to get out of smaller equipment. If you go with the cake, you got to use bigger uh, equipment. And then I saw a question from Taylor Malcolm about odors. Um, you know, in the opportunities that we've had, Alan, uh, you could probably jump in on this. Um, I haven't really had a uh, an odor issue. A lot of times I'm in a construction where there's not a lot of golfers and the product's been used previously. So I'll go to Alan on the odor. Yeah, I, I 
Uh, yeah, uh, like I said, when I when I first had the delivery, um, I there's a, a vague little stench to it. Like you can tell, like it's you know, um, almost like a mulch. Um, I don't know if anybody's familiar. Sometimes when you go to the shopping centers and stuff like that, and then the landscapers put out mulch, and there's kind of a little bit of a stench to it, and sometimes even more of a stench than, than what you would you know want to want to be around. Um, but I found that with, with the Woody blend that I've been getting, that when it is first delivered, there is a little bit of a stench. Um, but like I said, it's nothing that is not bearable. And I monitored it, and within two days of sitting out in my staging area, out in the open air like that, um, the smell went away. Um, and when my guys have spread it, you know, by hand, and when I put it in a utility cart with a top dresser on it, um, I, don't, I don't smell it at all. And but I will say that I would have to say that if you do cover it up because you're concerned about, you know, it getting rained on or anything like that. Yeah, I would think that it's going to hold the smell in a little bit longer. But as far as being out in the open air, um, it's, it's really something that's, that's very bearable, um, you know, to the nose and, and to the senses. And one thing I'll add for all you listening, um, horticulturalists, people planting in ornamentals. Um, this stuff's money, uh, especially if you're doing stuff like tulip bulbs, daffodil bulbs, things, crocuses, things that, you know, you bore that hole, take a, you know, a small handful of bloom, throw it right in a hole, kick a little, little tiny bit of dirt in there, uh, soil, plant the bulb, cover everything back up. Um, uh, it is, uh. It is stunning what it can do to things, especially like tulips and annual bulbs that you're planting. So talk to, you know, horticulturalists, landscape people, um, you know, if they can corpor incorporate that into their process, uh, the results will be, uh, they'll be well worth the effort. Wow, thanks, Jeff. Um, got a few more questions here. Um, Ron uh, wanted to know, um, Ron being a compost expert that uh, uh, DC Water often works with, he's actually going to be doing a webinar um, for the um, Potomac chapter of ASLA coming up, a little plug for that. But he was asking if uh, Jeff has used any fresh bloom on golf courses or, or um, the other blends other than the Woody blend. No, I, I haven't used any fresh on any golf course processes. What I'm trying to do as an early adopter or a leader in technology, individuals are accustomed to other products like a sand peat moss blend. So when you come at them with a, hey, we're going to do this with this material, and the principles and processes are going to be better than what we're accustomed to. There's a lot of people that'll kind of rear back a little bit and say, show me. So guys like Alan are early adopters and we're getting them to, you know, get their toe in the water, so to speak, to get more individuals. Once they see the results and the opportunities, then, you know, people will go through the adoption later stage adopters reluctant because there's nothing else again um you know we're we're on the leading edge of getting this adopted into what i'd call a a standard principle or procedure right now uh guys are on the front end they're doing little tiny projects with some of the dried material blending it in you know a thousand square foot t there you know some construction areas here recovery areas but yeah we're uh, we're pressing them and i'm i didn't want to bore everybody with data but i have the data that can show that this product blended with sand behaves like the standard materials used in the industry now and once i can show the data to people they'll they'll be able to make better decisions Fantastic. Uh, there's a couple questions that came in that I'm just going to address quickly. Uh, one was from Lisa, the price of bloom for each of the products, who's responsible for transportation to the course, um, who pays for transportation. 
So uh, we have a tiered pricing structure that ranges from 10 to 12 bucks a yard to 20 to 24 bucks a yard, um, depending on how much you order in a given calendar month. Um, and I can um, certainly share more details with anyone who's who's interested. Um, the 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 woody blend, for example, is the the ten to twenty range. Um, our fresh bloom, obviously, being being less than the value added products. Um, in terms of transportation, uh, we have uh, third party haulers that we work with and contract for that, and that is paid for by the by the customer. Um, we do uh, have some customers who also do pickups with their own trucks. That's something um, on arrangement. And um, Indrajit also wanted to know if we're allowing blue, um, bulk bloom pickup. Uh, right now we are not due to the, the COVID-19 situation. We're still monitoring that at some point. Um, we will again be allowing that, but um, not for the foreseeable future. However, there are a number of uh, retailers, you can find them all on our website where you can pick up um, uh, bulk bloom, um, including custom blends that um, some, some other companies are doing. Um, for example, Edrich Lumber um, near Baltimore, um, closer, closer to DC, you've got uh, Molten Stone that does um, small deliveries of our blends. Um, Rock, Rockstone Sand Yard. So, um, yeah, check check that out on our website. And let's see. Um, is the fresh bloom or cured bloom used in the bloom sand blend? Um, that's fresh bloom. We're, um, for, for both of our blends, um, being the, the bloom um, sand blend and the, the witty blend, we are just using fresh bloom. And that's going out kind of same day. Um, and it's, it's kind of remarkable how much uh, the um, inputs really sort of balance out the what would otherwise be a, a kind of wet product. Uh, I think there might have been one other. Oh, there's a question here on um, ratio of biosolids to sand put on the put putting green. Um, I think it looks like Jeff answered that to 2 to 5% by volume. And... Another question, um, have you had any challenges with the added labor cost to top dress bloom versus conventional fertilizer, either granular or foliar application? This is often a comment I receive from golf courses when gauging interest in a biosolids product. Um, um, when do you guys want to take on that one? What, what was the question again? Yeah, um, any challenges with the added uh, labor cost to top dress with bloom versus a conventional fertilizer as as this person um, received that comment from other golf courses for, for other biosolids products no i had i me personally i haven't had any challenges um it's for me and and, and the labor cost i mean for what it takes for me to even just load up the uh the top dresser myself with a utility card and go out and spread it i mean um there's nothing in any there's no there's really nothing added to to what i'm trying to do and what i'm trying to accomplish compared to using a bag fertilizer it's just a bag fertilizer like i said i mean you're talking about anywhere of upwards of 25 dollars to 30 dollars a bag and and like i said you know for applications that i need to put out you know with a bag fertilizer i mean bloom for the cost of, of what I was able to get it in for uh, the woody blend um, it it supersedes you know even trying to even think about me going and getting a conventional fertilizer that's bagged um, again the the green mix that I purchased last year with peat moss in it um, roughly I'll tell you this it cost me four grand to get it in for 20 23 tons um, whereas uh, the top dressing that I got in for my fairway mix that I'm mixing with the the uh, the woody the woody blend um, that basically was costing me thirty one dollars a ton and then on top of that um, basically roughly it came out to half the cost of what I was getting for the greens divot mix with the peat moss for that moisture retention so uh, there really hasn't been too much added to me as far as labor and, and anything like that it's just been more cost effective for me to use a product like this woody blend and again that's one reason why when jeff uh comes out and visits with me again we're going to talk about um 
you know, taking this and putting it in a bigger top dresser and, and seeing how we can incorporate it into the soil structure in the rough and maybe even uh, think about doing it on the fairways. We'll just have to see. I just want to make sure that I don't get anything trapped um, up in the upper, you know, three inches of the of the mix, you know, because I'm out here on a, a clay based foundation um, with my tees and fairways and my greens are, are sand based. So I just want to make sure that, you know, I don't hurt myself and and putting too much out or not putting enough to where I cause problems for myself. Yeah, and I'll answer the question about labor costs. Um, yeah, it stands to reason if we're handling more volume of product uh, and and putting it out, it will increase our labor utilization. So it's kind of cost benefit again going with a controlled release product in a higher volume um, takes more man hours to get on the ground than a conventional granular fertilizer. And, you know, I do some work in agriculture also, and they hit the same reluctance, you know, um, you want to spread this product, you know, up to 10 tons per acre. And when guys start hearing, oh my gosh, I got to put 10 tons per acre of material on, uh, they, they start to get a little bit nervous. But the, the added benefits, like James mentioned, uh, some farmers used it in Maryland last year, got into a drought. They had a 65 bushel yield differential on the bloom versus non-bloom treated fields. And if you guys don't know, that equates to about a $250 increased yield uh, potential over their conventional methodologies. And I highly doubt it took them $250 an acre to spread bloom. So, you know, it, it has to be measured uh, cost benefit. And each situation is definitely uh, unique. So, um, yeah, it's a long-term play versus a short-term play, too. Uh, we can get into the soil structure and other benefits, et cetera, and it's really hard to put a value on that. Fantastic. Yeah, I just I just want to add, um, yeah. so when it comes to the blends, you know, and I think Alan and, and Jeff definitely mentioned it, um, the labor costs aren't going to be too different because the uh, – the texture is going to be, you know, part of our goal was to try and make that texture similar to other composts. So, it, you know, um, looks like four streams could, could easily integrate that into their, uh, their existing um, top dressing and incorporation program. The, the added labor you're going to see is if you're using the, um, the cake material. So um, remember that photo from Urban Zinc and, uh, and uh, Jeff kind of mentioned this. Um, you know, that's going to take a little bit, a little bit of heavier equipment. Um, if you're going to blend it, you know, you might be using a, uh, a compost mixer. Um, you know, some, some of the mixers are going to struggle because the material's a bit s stickier. Um, but, but you can use, uh, you know, things like a Bobcat and surface spread it and then, um, incorporate it with, with that rock hound, um, uh, and, and tiller, uh, and, and urban zinc has been seeing a lot of good results there. So I think for them, they, they saw that the cost benefit given the alternatives, which I believe was leaf grow in that case um, for Crofton, uh, definitely, definitely were in favor of bloom. Um, and yet yeah, we sell that material at $5 a ton and then, you know, added transport um, in addition to that. So it's definitely cheaper than some of the other organic amendments out there. Um, so yeah, some of our customers are definitely finding maybe a bit of extra labor, but uh, certainly, certainly worth it um, for that cake material. Great, thanks, James. Um, we're we're at we're at time here. Um, there there was a uh, one jokester who wanted to know if uh, they could get a discount on their on their their fees if they tell the pro shop how good it looks. And um, I will say that we we do have a referral program. So if you do have um, someone out there uh, um, a a golf course that you frequent or uh, a retailer that you frequent. Um, if you refer a customer to us, you can 
um, end up getting a, a discount on, on your own material if they end up becoming a paid customer. Uh, feel free to reach out to me if you have any referrals you want to give. I'm at um, April at bloomsoil.com. And um, I just want to thank everyone for coming for the, the, the great uh, questions and comments and for these great presentations. I'm really excited about uh, the possibilities of this for, for, for not just for turf, but specifically the golf course industry, since this is really, as you say, um, you guys are the early adopters and the pioneers in this. So um, uh, stay tuned for, for more webinars. We haven't really announced our, our next one yet, other than, as I mentioned, um, a partner webinar that we're going to be doing with the American Society of Landscape Architects. Uh, that's going to be in July. Um, it will come at a fee for non OSLA members, um, but it will also um, provide a CEU for, for those uh, who might be looking for that. So um, if you're on our mailing list, you'll get more information about that soon. And um, I'll follow up with the recording of this if anyone needs to review or wants to share it with a colleague. And with that, um, I will wish you all a great rest of your day. Take care, everyone. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Take care. Great job. Bye now.